We wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the advent of electrical propulsion and how that's going to be affecting uh, both true electric or even hybrid, um, how that's going to affect the power systems, power generation. Um, you're at the forefront of seeing that. Do you want to talk a little bit to the voters about the choices that they have in terms of what's possible and what that means for the average day voter as they think about uh, maybe either repowering their own boat or purchasing a new boat? So I was just at the Miami show and they had a whole big room that they devoted to uh, electric boats. And uh, we've got, we had uh, several boats in there that will do uh, 20 and 30 knots under electric power. I mean, they are pure electric boats. Uh, but on every one of those data sheets that was in front of the boat, uh, you looked at the maximum speed, 30 knots. You looked at the size of the battery pack. Typically it was 60 or more kilowatt hours. So at today's prices, you're talking $40,000 or more for the base battery pack. And then when you look down a little further down the, uh, the spec sheet, they had the range, and almost on almost all of those boats, they gave the range at five knots and not at 30 knots, because at 30 knots, none of those boats would run for even an hour under battery power. Yeah. Uh, but at five knots, because of the hull resistance curves and the way the load drops off as the speed goes down, uh, you could get maybe 100 miles out of those boats at five knots. But that's assuming flat water with no headwinds and no wave action. Uh, yeah. And so the bottom line here is, is we can do all kinds of short-range electric propulsion. We can have ski boats, we can have wakeboard boats, we can have sailboats that just power off the dock and then go sailing and then come back and power back on the dock. Um, there's a there's a ton of short-range boating, which is most of the boating we, we do, actually. I mean, we you and I tend to think in terms of cruising boats, but the vast yeah. majority of boaters uh, take the boat and go out for an hour or two and go home. Now, all of those applications, we can electrify uh, but the minute we want any range at sea, uh, we simply don't have the battery storage capability to do it, and we don't have any other way to generate enough electricity for propulsion. It doesn't matter how much solar you put on a boat, unless it's an enormous custom-built catamaran that's covered in solar panels, yeah. um, you won't be able to get more than the three or four knots when the sun's shining. And then, of course, you can't power at night or when, the, when it's cloudy. So th there's no way at the moment with current technology we can get substantial range under electric power uh, over time, but we can electrify the vast majority of boating applications. Uh, and then uh, assuming we do that, so now we've got the fossil fuel engine off the boat, even if we then go in and we plug in to a shoreside energy source that's powered by coal, which is kind of the worst case, it's still environmentally uh, better than if we had an engine on the boat, a fossil fueled engine, because the the uh, losses from the, the power station, coal power, power station is maybe 50% efficient, 60%. And then we lose a little bit in the, in the transmission lines and then a bit more in the conversion on the boat. But at the end of the day, when we're running a fossil fueled engine on our boat, it's most of the time, it's at best 30% efficient. And much of the time it's below 20%. So when you look at that, if we can mm. recharge our batteries, even if it's coming from coal, it's probably environmentally better than, than having a fossil fuel engine on the boat. So there are, regardless of the energy source on shore, there are significant environmental benefits to going electric if we can do it. Uh, but we just can't do it on um, offshore boats at one range. I wish it was otherwise. Yeah. I mean, I, so on my boat, I want a hybrid system where I would do all of my low-speed maneuvering in harbor and getting on and off the dock and so on, setting the anchor, pulling it up. I would do all of that under electric power. And then uh, the only time I would fire up diesel is if I wanted um, sustained range uh, under power because there's no wind and, and I can't sail. Yeah, and that's a pretty and ideal that situation. For, for an offshore boat, that's for most of them, that's the best way to go at the moment. Yeah. Um, and I think that you bring a good point about the short distances. And I saw the same thing um, at the boat shows was, I mean, that's going to happen is the tenders being electric propulsion, uh, even for the power boaters that have larger tenders, you know, 10 feet, 15 feet, um, especially for just, you know, going to a place, putting a, you know, Pacific Northwest might be, you know, doing some trapping. 
uh, crabbing, prawning, and then coming and coming back and having the mothership via generator recharge um, the tender uh, battery pack that allowed you to go out. So I think tenders, you're right, because they're short range. Short bursts of speed might be the first uh, boats to get converted to electrical. But the hybrid is interesting um, because you have the ability of also recharging your battery bank. Um, do you want to talk about what what are the benefits other than the environmental benefits of having a hybrid propulsion on your boat? Like what were the driving factors that made you go with that model? Yes. Um, if we, if we uh, back up a little bit, there's an awful lot of boaters today that, that want to hang on the hook and run air conditioning or other somewhat energy intensive loads, um, at least overnight, maybe for, for a day or two without, running a generator. So then they have to have a, a ton of batteries on the boat anyway to supply those loads. So mm -hmm. then we've got to recharge the batteries. And typically when we do it with a generator, it's chronically inefficient. Uh, with, a, with any kind of a hybrid system, if it's a parallel hybrid, your electric propulsion motor is also going to function as a generator. So if we're, let's say we are... Uh, powering for a longer distance. So now we fired up the diesel engine and now the electric motor turns into a generator and then we can recharge the batteries. Uh, if we've got a serial hybrid, we have the electric motor attached to the propeller shaft and, and the diesel engine is driving the generator. So there's no connection between the diesel engine and the, and the uh, propeller shaft. But uh, there we can optimize the load on the generator to where it's running at peak efficient uh, peak, peak efficiency. One way and another, with most hybrid applications, both parallel and serial, if we uh, do a decent job of optimizing the situation, the, the engine in the system, the fossil fuel engine, is going to be running at close to peak efficiency anytime it's running, as opposed to a normal uh, situation on a boat where much of the time our engines are running chronically underloaded and they're extremely inefficient. So we end up effectively compressing our energy production needs into shorter engine run times at higher loads. So then there are lifestyle benefits. So now we're not running the engine so many hours. There are maintenance benefits mm. um, because we, we don't have to do the maintenance so frequently. And also we're loading the engines better, uh, which is a better duty cycle for them. So, so there's a lot of um, spin-off benefits to finding a way to to optimize the fossil fuel engine use on the boat, which is really all we're talking about here. When we talk about hybrids, we're talking about how to yeah. how to minimize the engine run times and optimize the efficiency when we're running them. And if we do it right, there are substantial uh, lifestyle benefits to the boat owner, along with some, normally speaking, relatively modest efficiency gains. Yeah, the, it, it is transformative, especially for the boaters that and the sailors that actually do want to sail, right? There's a subset of boaters or sailors that don't sail that often unless it's prevalent and going in the right direction. But when we've done electric con conversion for the boaters here in BC and Washington State, they're purists. They, they go where the wind takes them. They want to get out of the harbor. They want to come into the harbor with electric propulsion. They might make a little bit of headway if it's really calm um, and have the electric kelp. But they're gonna they're looking for a different type of challenge. They're trying to where the wind takes them. Um, and then over time at Anchorage, they might get their solar array to recharge a little bit. And you say that's a big challenge is how do you recharge all that power that you've taken out, especially if you're not connected to shore power or you don't have a generator on board. So if you're curious again, go on our website and find out more answers and solutions with this sort of setup. And thanks for asking. And thanks for all of you for listening and tuning in.